So Adobe has just announced a bunch of new updates from their Adobe Max event in Miami and in this video I'm going to show you 5 of these new features for you to try in Illustrator 2025. So first up we have some new image trace features. So a lot of you people may have already experienced this before where you're working with a client and unfortunately they've sent you over a white PNG. You now need to try and change the colour of this image, but when you try and use image trace, unfortunately you end up with a white bounding box around your image. Thankfully, Illustrator has addressed this and created a new feature for us to use. So the first thing we want to do is open up the image trace panel. And as you can see, in the image trace panel there's a bunch of new options for us to use. Now if we head up to the preset drop down and select high fidelity photo, and then give this a second to load. We can then head down to a new option called transparency. So if we tick this, and once again just give it a second to load, as you can see that white bounding box has now been removed, allowing us to expand this image to become a fully vectorized object. This is massively helpful for when you have to try and expand these PNGs that get provided to you from clients that you just can't work with. So next up we've got a new shortcut that allows us to add gradients to our shape just with a simple drag. So previously when you wanted to add colours for a gradient, you would first open up the gradient panel, then select each gradient slider, and then by using the eyedropper tool, you would then select the colours that you wanted to add to your gradient. This was a pretty tedious task and also quite inaccurate with where you would place your gradient sliders. Instead, if you select your shape and add a gradient, all you need to do now is head up to your swatches panel and select your color group icon and then whilst holding command or control on windows simply drag down your swatch group onto the gradient slider and this will equally space out each color allowing you to then make adjustments quickly and easily. So next up we're heading back over to the image trace panel and this time we're going to take a look at how we can expand images that have gradients. So as you can see here we've got a, just a normal JPEG image and again when we press image trace then head up to our image trace panel. We can change our presets over to high fidelity photo. And as you can see, what normally ends up happening is you get these straight lines instead of a nice smooth gradient, which is what we want. Thankfully, they now have a new option in the image trace panel, which is gradients. So if I head down and select gradients, as you can see, that background has instantly become a lot more smoother. There's also an adjustment slider that allows you to increase or decrease the final output. I can now press expand. And as you can see, it's not perfect. There are still some gradients within this image that haven't quite been picked up correctly. But one thing that it has done is acknowledge that these are gradients. So now if I ungroup this and then select this background, as you can see, it already is showing as a gradient, which means I can quickly select the gradient tool and make edits to this background. So the next tool is one that I am really excited about and that is Object Path. And what Object Path does is essentially allows us to align objects onto a specific path that we create. So in this example here, I can draw out a circle to create a path and then simply select the objects that I wish to align along this path and then head over to the left hand panel and select objects on path. Then all I need to do is simply click on the path and as you can see this will now evenly space my objects along this path. There's also an option for us to be able to rotate our objects whilst on this path. Um, we can adjust the spacing on this path and we can also then move all of these objects at once along a path. If we also open up the properties panel, if you go to windows then properties, here along the objects on path option that you can also pivot your objects to align differently on the path. 
This can also work if you wanted to use, for example, just a simple pencil tool. So if I just simply just freehand out a quick path with the pencil tool, I can then select my objects that I wish to use. Then once again, head up to object on path, select the path that I've created. And as you can see, I have now got these shapes along my path. So this last feature that I want to show you is really useful and I'm super happy that Illustrator has finally brought this into the software and that is expanding your artwork within your artboard. So in the past whenever you'd want to expand or change the size of your artboard you would quite often have to first expand your artboard, make sure that any of your layers are not locked and then after that you would then have to expand out your art. But now Illustrator has thankfully created a new feature that allows us to expand this artwork at the same time. So if we now head back over to the artboard option, then head up to the top navigation, you can see we now have scale artwork with artboard. So if I click on this and now expand my artboard, as you can see, all of the artwork within the artboard has expanded with the artboard. And there you have it. This is five brand new features from Adobe Illustrator 2025. If you like the video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one.